Good morning, church. Today we're in Revelation chapter 11. And have you ever maybe tried to figure something out? Maybe God made a promise or you're reading something, you're trying to understand it and it, and it doesn't make sense. I know for some of you going through Revelation has been kind of a challenge of trying to understand this. But imagine John. He's in the first century and he's trying to... Um, communicate events, things that are in our future still, with technologies and things that he can't totally understand. And yet he's being faithful to report. And in chapter 11, we have one of those things that actually people who have criticized scripture and said it can't be true have pointed to again and again. A passage in there where it talks about something the whole world would see. And people said, ha, the whole world can never see anything at the whole time. The whole world can never be in one place at one time. And interesting, as we go through this chapter, we can see how now we don't have a problem with this. We see the reality. John was just being the faithful messenger. In chapter 11, it tells us about two prophets who were in Jerusalem. Remember that the uh, Antichrist's powers have taken over in a sense that he has taken over Jerusalem. But there is um, uh, two thorns in his flesh, as it, as it were, these two prophets who have supernatural powers and they can't be killed. And they have the power to bring down rain. They have the power to turn water into blood. And we don't hear all what they were doing, but we're told for 40, for 42 months, they're able to basically wreak havoc in Jerusalem, standing up for God and being a testimony to God, about God, to these Gentiles. And then all of a sudden, there's, a, there's this monster that would be of science fiction value to us that comes out of the abyss, has the ability to attack and kill these two prophets. Well, the Antichrist, all, the, all his forces rejoice because they couldn't do anything, and now they seem to conquer. And this is where it says the whole world sees them as for three and a half days they lay there, and leaving the bodies for everyone to see, for everyone to know. And it's always been, how can the whole world see anything? Well, we understand that, don't we? But see, for years and years, for centuries, uh, they've looked and said there, there weren't such a thing as TV they understood. Yet when TV came out and when the, the landing of the, on the moon happened in 1969, which was one of the first times that the whole world seemed to be watching an event simultaneously, many theologians would go, see, now it makes sense. Now we understand how the whole world can see an event. Of course, we know the technology has come since then. You could get an alert on your phone saying the prophets in Jerusalem have been killed. And all of a sudden, there's the live video you can watch. But you know, God has a champion in this. We read actually in Daniel 12 about these prophets also. He foresees that of those being killed and them laying there for three and a half days. But then they are supernaturally, they are raised from the dead. They ascend in a cloud into heaven, showing the ultimate power of God to everyone who is there. I think it's cool that, that in prophecy, uh, John was able to faithfully transmit things he couldn't even totally understand. And now us in the future can look and see how it makes sense, how the whole world can see an event at one time. But of course, the real power of this is showing the power of God, that God is working through this story in Revelation that will bring to a conclusion this heaven and this earth to an eternity that we're going to be with God forever. So continue to struggle through. Man, you guys are in the sprint to the end. And I know some of this is hard to understand. Some of it's future for us, so we don't totally understand it. But understand, more of it will make sense. We'll understand more as we study it. And as I said when I opened Revelation 1, God says you're blessed for reading this book. You're blessed for, for, for studying this book. Because it reminds us this isn't all there is. That our faith and hope isn't set in the visible, but in the invisible in our relationship with God. Continue on in the challenge. Thank you guys for being with us. Man, you're in the sprint. Continue tomorrow with Revelation chapter 12.